the, the land is functionally separated from the straight to the south of Moulton Road. You cannot easily get over the road. You can't get into the, into the land to the north of Moulton Road easily. The, the land to the south of Moulton Road is, we accept, is a accessible green space. The land to the north of Moulton Road is not. I think that exemplifies why it is such a clear defensible boundary in this location. I think when you're looking at the physical boundary on a map as well, the, the shape of the boundary does imply that it's a fairly ad hoc approach to the boundary location because it is so jagged that it's not clear and it would go back to the issue that I mentioned previously about the, those small appeal sites. Uh, and I think Mr Pilcher made, uh, made the comment of wasting time where, wasting local council time and inspector time where appeals for even householder developments at those locations are made more complex when they shouldn't be that complex because it's, it should be clear where the green belt ends and finishes, uh, starts and finishes, sorry. Um, <clears throat> I think physically, when looking at the area to the south east, sorry, just get my head around the compass, um, <laughs> to this southeast of the development boundary at the moment, physically it does look similar to Boundary 20, which Mr Pilsher men mentioned, but it doesn't make any difference really how much land is taken out of the green belt. It, sh it should be setting, fundamentally setting where the boundary is clear and forgetting what's been promos promoted by developers or what any, what any of us say today. It's just setting those boundaries in a clear location that can't be disputed in the future. And if you're looking at a rear boundary of a garden, if someone's stolen a bit of land into an agricultural field, if they've, if other, or the other way around, if the farmer's pinched a bit, bit of land back for uh, maintenance purposes or anything like that, it becomes very unclear where the Greenbelt boundary actually is in that location. So, to summarise, sorry, we would contend that the boundaries of numbers 32 to 35 in section 5 should be amended to New Lane and Moulton Road as a minimum. Thank you, Mr. Perkins. I, I, I can see from the map clearly what, you, what you're suggesting. That's helpful. Mr. Linus? I could ask Ms. Hilly Brown to comment on the, the detail which uh, is set out as far as the Council is concerned uh, at A3475 uh, and on, uh, taking in this boundary um, uh, section. Again, just reiterate it's important to look at the up to date methodology as now proposed in analysis there, but I'll ask her to elaborate on the Council's reasons for setting the boundary where it now proposes. Thank you. Um, so, of course, Mr Perkins is correct that the two roads that he's suggesting would provide recognisable and permanent boundaries, um, but we would also contend that the, the rear line of those properties also provides um, an appropriate uh, boundary, and indeed this is the approach that's been taken through much of the setting of the inner greenbelt boundary and is common practice in terms of inner greenbelt boundaries um, in other greenbelts elsewhere. So in terms of the boundary itself as proposed, we would contend that that's um, an appropriate boundary which is recognisable and permanent and obviously the definition of the greenbelt then would help in, uh, in those decisions for any subsequent applications as has been suggested. Um, as Mr Liner said, the uh, analysis is set out in uh, uh, Annex 3, which is document 59D, starting on page 475, running through to 481. And indeed, on page 481, it's noted the um, uh, 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 submission site, um, which is the site that Mr Perkins is referring to, and the boundary is shown um, on that um, plan on page 481 as well. Um, and in that analysis, it goes through the different criteria in turn. I don't propose to go through each one of those, but if there are particular ones you want clarification on, I can do so. Um, but it sets out that it's uh, particularly in relate, it, it has elements that conform with purposes four, one, and three. Um, just noting that it, it doesn't, in terms of purpose four criteria in two on landmark monuments. Thank you. Mr Linus, no? Thank you. Just one, one 
to the broad comment, having heard a number of points made on, on section five, and e even allowing for the fact one needs to put in ST8 on here. The gravamen of what we're hearing this morning is effectively a, a collection of objectors looking to expand the boundary right the way round from um, 18, largely uh, expanding to the east, taking an ST8, but following the line right the way round to the south, including um, effectively down to uh, uh, the south part of Huntingdon. And the way it's been presented, just ask to, to bear in mind if, if that if that land is being suggested overall as an appropriate extension of the boundary, what that does to the criterion of compactness. We know from previous sessions that um, Historic England broadly support the approach that's been taken by the Council to protecting the historic character of York. And collectively, the way in which this boundary is being uh, presented, uh, we say would um, have a very clear effect on Purpose 4, in particular as applied as the most important Greenbelt purpose. Uh, uh, when one looks at the overall effect of what was being sought here. So I appreciate you need to look at the boundary stretches individually and the way that the objectives were presented their case, but the overall effect of what they're proposing collectively would be relatively significant, bearing in mind the, the purpose for uh, in particular. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm going to suggest we take a break now, if that's okay. Um, when I come back, I'll ask if there's anything else on inner boundary section five, and we'll deal with that, and then hopefully move on to section six and seven. Um, I've got ten to eleven, so we'll resume at five past. Fifteen minute break. Should we say ten past? I'm getting frowned at. So uh, we'll resume at ten past. Until then, thank you. <laughs>